This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. There is a hot new wellness experience that is waiting for you. It's called cow cuddling, and yes, it sounds like exactly what it is. You can visit a farm and pet and cuddle with a retired dairy cow. Fiona Wilson is one of the owners of Dumble Farm, which is in East Yorkshire in the UK. And she joins us now via Zoom. Hi, Fiona. Hi. Thanks for being on the program with us. Now, I understand this is a family farm that has been in the family since the 70s. But in the grand scheme of things, cow cuddling is something relatively new. When did it start? How did it start? Why did it start? Oh, well, that's a long story short, I think. Um, <laughs> yes, you're right. We've been here since the 70s. We had a dairy herd until then, and we have really bad flooding on our land now. So we had to sell the dairy cows, and we thought, what can we do next? We'd kept some of these dairy cows that were really, they were like pets. You know, we, we were very attached to our cows. And uh, we'd seen cow cuddling somewhere else, and we thought, maybe we can try it. And it took us quite a lot of months to get going, maybe four or five months of practicing with the cows getting them used to people but now they're used to the routine they are very much a routine animal and they really enjoy it and the people that come really enjoy doing it so yeah we do it a couple of times a week now you said you had to kind of prepare the cows to to uh, interact with the human beings how exactly did you do that it was quite a gradual process when we started doing our animal experiences which are mainly for our highland cattle that we have here as our conservation grazers we started just in just taking people into where the cuddle cows are and letting them get used to people being with them and things and then over the months we gradually had them so we would we would set them up to sit down really so about two hours before we start doing the experience we send them out give them lots of food so they fill up then about half an hour before we start we put them in the cuddling area by then, they're really full and they want to just sit down and cuddle, and ruminate. And that's the best time to cuddle them, really, when they're sat down. So we just gradually built up that routine so they were used to it. We'd already been gradually introducing them to different people every week. Uh, and so they're now they're really used to doing it. And they love the attention. That's one thing I, I, I wanted to ask because, I mean, I, I know nothing about cows. I'm a city boy, so I have no idea the mood or temperament of a cow. How do you know that they like it? Ah, well, if they didn't like it, they'd get up and walk off, I think is basically the answer. When when you've got a three-quarters of a ton cow, it, it, if you wanted to do something it doesn't want to, then it, it won't. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's all, I think like training any animal, it's all to do with rewarding them and cows enjoy the attention. They will come up to us for attention, and so we know they like it. We did obviously choose cows that we already knew had a good temperament to start with. We wouldn't be able to do it with any cow. We would maybe try to get some cows cuddling and they would never want to do it. It has, it has to be the right cow for the job, as it were. Well, I was about to ask, how do you know when it's the right cow? Uh, were you instinctively aware of the fact, even before you started this, that, oh, you know, cow A would be great, cow B not so much? Yes, certainly. There was these, the cows we kept were already really friendly. They already used to come, you would come to us when we were still milking them. They would come over to us, want affection. Some of them were quite licky. They'll stand and lick you. They like to be stroked. Yeah, they like the interaction. You know, cows have been obviously domesticated for thousands of years. They're well used to being with humans. Yeah, the, the ones we kept are very much of that right temperament. We, 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 wouldn't, we wouldn't have people with them if we thought the cow was going to be frightened or aggressive or do anything you know, to, to, to injure anybody. Obviously, safety is very, very important to us. And what about the people? I mean, you got the cows used to the idea of being cuddled. What about the, the general population? How did you build up the business to the point where people are coming and paying to have a cuddle with the cow? Was... was uh, their trepidation in the uh, in the beginning, or did people just take to it rather quickly? It was a bit of a slow start. Some people already wanted to come and meet these cows. Some people just love cows and they wanted to be near them. People were coming to us because they really liked the highlands and they wanted to see the highlands. Then when they met the cuddle cows, they really started to enjoy that. And when we started posting videos and things of people cuddling the cows, so many people wanted to come and do it now and be with the cuddle cows and have that close interaction with them. 
sitting with them, cuddling up to them. Some people will just come and lay their head on them. Other people want to come and chat about them. But it is a really nice, relaxing experience. One lady said the other week, it's just the aura of being with this big cow that's just sitting there, you know, all just cutting away and all warm and gentle. And how much does it cost and how much time does one get with a cow? Well, we charge £50 and it's about two and a half hours. That includes a range of things. We spend about three quarters of an hour with the actual cuddle cows and then we uh, meet our highland cows and things as well. And when you first started this, uh, I'm sure you had some idea of how successful it would be, but did you ever anticipate it would be this successful? Absolutely not. Right at the beginning, we had no idea. It was just a bit of a, a bit of a diversification. When we sold the dairy herd, we were thinking we need to do something to make a little bit of extra money. But now we're doing the cow cuddling and everyone wants to come and do it. And people are saying to us, I've had the best time ever. And it's just taken me away from the stresses of the day for a couple of hours. And it's been so wonderful. So just the pleasure we're giving to people is, is the biggest reward of all now. You have received a, a, a lot of attention. I mean, I saw this story on a newscast here in Canada, uh, and that's why I wanted to reach out to you. Uh, were were you surprised by the, the, the width and breadth of the response that you had? And also, have you heard from any, oh, I don't know, doctors or psychologists who, who quantify the, the advantages to cow cuddling? And firstly, yes, absolutely amazed by how worldwide it's been. We, we, we have seen ourselves all over the world. I've been on, on like radio, newspapers, even, even people in Antarctica have heard of us. Um, it, it's been amazing. Absolutely astounding um, how many people have heard about this. Um, as for doctors and things, it is a sort of a therapy. And so a lady came today, actually, and it's the third time she's been. And she's a very anxious lady. She had her husband come and stand at the side because she has to have someone there all the time. And she just loves being with the cows. And she keeps saying to me, thank you so much for just letting us come and, and do this. She just finds it so relaxing. So for her, it's obviously a therapy. Um, we can't call it a therapy unless it's actually some sort of medical thing. Um, and it's not a medical thing. We, we tend to say it's well-being rather than therapy. But it, it is. I mean, being with animals, it has struck me a dog or a cat. or It has that sort of very soothing, therapeutic feel to it nice and stress relieving and i think it's the same with the cow it's just there it's not judging you it's all big and warm and soft and gentle and you just forget about you know all the stresses of the day and just concentrate on on that animal do you get people who are return visitors and if so are they people who like to return to a specific cow do do people have favorites well i'm not sure actually um i must do. Um, some people have come and then they've, then they've sponsored a cow. We do Highland Cow sponsorships. We've had sponsorships from all over and the money from the sponsorships goes towards our big conservation project. But we have had people visit and then later they said, I would like to sponsor this cow. And we do that with our Highlands. With the cuddle cows, yes, I think they probably do. The lady that came today, you know, remembered the one she'd seen before. I said, oh yes, I remember Chip or Cloud from last time. You said earlier that you, uh, because of the floods, you had to get rid of some of the dairy cows, and and then you started this idea to to bring in some money. Uh, have you turned things around to the point where you might have to get more cows? Um, at the moment, because the farm, most of the farm is underwater at the moment. Um, so we, we're quite pleased at the moment we have a lot less cows than we used to. We don't have any dairy cows now. We're just running a big conservation project with Highland cattle as our conservation grazers. And then the, the, the cuddle cows are like a little extra thing that we do. We, we are having, well, four of our cuddle cows are due to calve next month. And we're hoping that those little calves will be our apprentice cuddle cows. And we'll see. It, it depends how they go. They might be a cuddle cow or they might not. It, it, it just depends on their character. Now, since this is radio, we, we, we haven't got uh, the visuals, but I've seen pictures. People uh, hug the cows. Uh, sometimes the cows are lying down and people are resting against the cows. What, what are they? Are they listening to the heartbeat? Are they listening to the regurgitation? What is it that they, they're getting from this experience, at least audibly? Audibly. I would, I would say that the sound of them cutting 
is is the main thing. You hear the stomach rather than the heartbeat. <laughs> I think I think on a cow. I think it's the warmth of it. My husband suffers from anxiety, and if he's feeling stressed, he goes and sits with the cows, just laying with them, and they're just munching away. Um, yeah. I think I think that's what you hear, really, the cutting. It's so rhythmic. Now, somebody like yourself who has spent a lifetime working with the cows, have you cuddled with the cows? And is this something you did before you allowed the general population to do so? Oh, yes. Yes. I, 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 my favourites, particularly, you always go and find your favourite. Give them a hug. If they're laid down, you can sit with them a bit. Yes, definitely. Yes, it's always something we've done. And as you say, the cows themselves really enjoy it. We seem to, yes. Um, they, they will walk up to you and, and look for your attention. Yeah, definitely do. Is there a bigger season for you to do this, or is this something that is constant year-round? We can pretty much do it all year-round, yes. It's only, we're having a few weeks off after next week because some of them are due to calf. Um, but after the calf and settle down again, we'll, we'll, we'll start cuddling again with them. And it doesn't it seem to bother them. They're so used to people. They're so, they're so confident with us now. Well, it's it's a it's a fantastic business that you have, and uh, kudos to you for for creating this. You know, I remember when I was a kid, uh, the Coronation Milk Company. It, it always said it came from contented cows, and clearly, you have some very contented cows and some very happy customers because of it. This is absolutely true. Uh, if if an animal isn't happy, it, it it doesn't produce. You know, it's the same with milking cows or whatever. You know, we all try to keep our cows as happy as possible. Um, we, we give them the best life we possibly can. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations on your success. Uh, pe- uh, people can go to your website, which is dumblefarm.com, and they can find that information as to uh, how it costs, what the times are, and uh, do you get people from all over the world, not just in the UK, visiting your farm? Interestingly, we have had a, had a couple last night send me an email and they said they wanted to come across, to, and they're coming from Germany. They want to travel from Germany to do cow cuddling and meet our highlands as well. But they want to do the cow cuddling experience and, and they want to get something booked. And they're asking me when, when they can come. So, yes, we do. We have had a lady from Hawaii visit us as well. Well, congratulations on all that you're doing and, and continued success. Thank you very much, Fiona, for being on the program well, with us. Thank you very much. Fiona Wilson, one of the owners of Dumble Farm in East Yorkshire in the UK. You can go to my website at thestufffile.com, check out the show number for this program, which is show number 0751, and you'll find the links to their website. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.